Hello, good to have you with us on Red Barn Radio. I'm Brad Becker. We continue to celebrate the 20th season of Red Barn Radio, and tonight we welcome you to show number 775. <laughs> and what a special guest. With songs and lyrics pulled from real life experience, the songs of tonight's guest, Alabama native Drayton Farley, are firmly grounded, possessing a confessional quality that rings true to those who've worked hard and lived honest lives. A thoughtful writer with a voice that can growl and soar in the same song, Drayton turns phrases that tumble around in your mind a long time after you hear them the first time. We are so glad to have Drayton joining us tonight on Red Barn Radio. Welcome Drayton Farley to the Red Barn stage. Thank you. First song is uh, Lucinda. This is uh, the only murder song I think that I have. You know I like my whiskey and I like my pistol too. Two of them don't mix Just like me and you We'll go dancing in the dark And I'll take it way too far The way I do In the middle of November In a small little bar It's where I met Lucinda We left in my car We made it through the city Her feeling less than pretty with her new scars Hey
Good evening and welcome to Red Barn Radio. Wherever in the world you're listening, welcome to Roots Music Southern Style. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. Red Barn Radio is supported by Visit Lex, Lexington, Kentucky's Convention and Visitors Bureau. More information on what Lexington has to offer is at visitlex.com. LexArts, Lexington, Kentucky's premier cultural development, advocacy, and fundraising organization, working for the development of a strong and vibrant arts community as a means of enhancing the quality of life in Central Kentucky. Follow Red Barn Radio on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Here's the host of Red Barn Radio to tell us more about tonight's performers. Drayton Farley released some of his first music in 2018, then Hargrove and Sweet Southern Sadness. His next album contained a total of 10 songs penned, performed, and recorded by this Alabama native. However, it would be three years later in, in the January of 2021 when Farley would truly make his mark on the country music world. A Hard Up Life, his first full-length record, took fans of heartfelt country by storm. These days, Drayton is opening for some of the biggest acts in the genre, including Willie Nelson, and his star continues to rise. Americana Highways writes, Drayton Farley's lyrics are immediately reminiscent of the humor and subtlety of John Prine, the directness and honesty of Dylan, and the everyman gravity of Pete Seeger. Farley firmly establishes himself as one of the great American voices in folk and Americana music. And we got him here tonight, folks. Thanks for joining us for an evening of music and conversation with Drayton Farley on Red Barn Radio. Uh, the next song, just the background, is um, I wrote this thinking back on a time I remember. Uh, there's a place in Alabama, it's a river, it's called the Cahaba River, and uh, it's a place that I would always go to uh, if I was feeling down or just needed a, um, a pick-me-up and uh, some kind of escape. And uh, my wife and I, I can remember we got into a little bickering match and she, uh, she ran to the river and all I knew was that she had left and so I left too, but my go-to place was the river. And when I got there, uh, her car was there. So that led to this song. It's called Sweet Southern Sadness.
drive away if only for the evening you take The um, the next song is a song, uh, a little more uplifting song I wrote. It's a love song to my wife. You get me higher than the Vulcan, way up high, top red mountain, like the shoals of a Cahaba. Cut their course and keep me counting down the days Until you're in my arms again And you are softer than the cotton Growing wild out in the field Back when we were unbegotten now this world is just a wheel And it's stirring up the butterflies inside Us again And you sound just like a songbird Singing to me softly This next song is um, the song I sang first. Lucinda is about it's about a woman's husband, uh, or it's about a, a woman who who got a man to 
follow her home from the bar. And they went home, and uh, at the bar, she had told this man about her husband being abusive. And so, in the story, he goes home and and uh, takes care of her problem, so to speak. And uh, I was going to write another song, and I was I, I knew I was writing about a girl, and I wasn't sure who it was. And so I just kind of told myself a few lines into the song, maybe this maybe this girl is uh, the daughter of that wife and maybe that little girl was there that night when that happened and so it kind of tied these two songs into each other so this next one's called Georgia and uh, yeah She was born in Georgia at a real unfortunate time Daddy'd been laid off the factory He didn't feel the need to let him know why And her mama, she was a lost cause She'd been that way for years And she'd take more to the alcohol Than anybody cared The day she turned 16, she took her job in the town. Been about six hard years by then since her daddy put himself down. She'd work all day and she'd work all night. She'd do it all over again. And she gave more than a girl her age. Should ever have to give. So keep on working, Georgia. Just keep on pulling through. Just keep on doing all you can. It's all that you can do. So keep on. She's got dreams of leaving this town and making a life of her own. Away from all she so far found and the place her sea was sown. She's got dreams of big city lights. She's got dreams of big town nights. She's got dreams of feeling all right. It's all coming back around So keep on working, Georgia Just keep on pulling through Just keep on doing all you can It's all that you can do Keep on I'm, uh, I'm 26 well, at the time of this recording, and I've always felt a little older than I was, and um, so it's kind of the basis of this next song. This one's called Chewing on Fire. I'll 
Our guest this evening on Red Barn Radio is Drayton Farley. He's from Alabama, and he uh, he has an album Hargrove and Sweet Southern Sadness, and and um, I think the the first couple of songs that he sang, Lucinda and Sweet Southern Sadness, came from that early album, and then um, then the next two tunes are are from his most recent album, Hard Up Life, and um, <clears throat> Chewing on Fire, are a new tune. Yeah. Yeah, relatively new. Yeah, I mean, I, I released it last year. Um, I don't know. I just I'd already put a heart of life out, and I was you know I'm always writing, and so uh, I wrote that, and I just it was what it was, and I didn't really plan to make it anything different, and so I just released that as a single, and yeah. Well, well, you say it, it was what it was, like it's like it was just nothing. It's a beautiful song. It was Thank you. Really yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a powerful song. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know, um, I wasn't sure what else I could 
do or, or where else I could take it, you know. And I thought it was just fine where it was, being acoustic, and I felt good about it. Yeah. So um, I have had thoughts. I'm like, man, I maybe should have held it out, you know, kept uh. that one in the back <laughs> pocket. You know, but uh, I don't, I don't, you know, regret it or anything. Oh, I'm that's glad good. I did. Yeah, regret doesn't do much good no, anyway. No. So is that the way you do it now in um, in the biz? You, you put out you put out some uh, an album and then uh, you continue to sort of drop new tunes <laughs> down. It seems like a lot of folks do that now. Yeah, I mean they they do. I think you know this day and age with the digital stuff, uh, those platforms really like uh, continue. They like to be fed, you know, all the time. So I didn't do that intentionally. It's just, um, I think that's why a lot of, you know, bigger artists you see doing that, it just keeps things fresh, keeps them, because we, you know, the internet moves so quickly now, you can, you know, release art, and then it's it's only for that week. Next week, it, it's gone, you know, so I think that's why people are doing that more often. Does that drive you nuts sometimes? Uh, no, I don't really care. You know, I try I try to um, not not let, you know, that... <laughs> bigger world influence my little world you know? ah good you know good well that seems that seems healthy um so you grew up in alabama and where is where is woodstock your town woodstock is uh, central alabama it's 30 minutes just west of birmingham and 30 minutes uh east of tuscaloosa so right between the two and what's it what's it feel like there what what kind of a town is that for somebody visiting what it's would they what would they <laughs> see there <laughs> um there's not a lot to see there. I mean, it's just, um, yeah, there's not a lot of people there. I mean, it's a super small town. There's not quite really a, an attraction, I wouldn't say, there. Um, there's a Mercedes automotive plant. Uh -huh. Lots of folks in town work there, and uh, there's a lot of just production plants, you know, around that area. And so, you know, we have people moving into the area because they got jobs there. And But, uh, I mean, it's just small southern town you know it's kind of it's not really like too off in the woods or anything but there's not much there i mean you wouldn't probably go there on purpose you know without a, a reason i guess unless you've just lived there a lot of young life. people get through high school there planning to go ahead and work in the plant like their dads did yeah i mean you yeah. see that yeah of course and you know we have university of alabama's down in tuscaloosa so a lot of people in high school are shooting to go there you know so they try and get out, and I think maybe the overall goal is get a degree and get out of here, you know? But uh, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, and then some folks are just fine where they're at, and they stick around. What was high school like for you? Did you have in mind, like when you were in high school, did you have in mind, um, or I should say, did your parents have in mind <laughs> for you to, um, to go on to Tuscaloosa or elsewhere? No, no. No, it was never something I ever even wanted, really, or, or them. I mean, you know, they were very realistic always about just, you know, we're told some things we have to do or we must, and, uh, you know, my parents never did that. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't say. Uh, I mean, high school was fine for me. I didn't have a bad time in high school, but there was never any pressure to, like, oh, you got to hope you're, you know, get your grades up and you go to school and get that degree, you know. Yeah. You know, my dad, he, he worked for himself uh and so and then i'm the youngest of five so mom was very busy you know working raising us so real real blue collar you know the the degree thing was kind of over our heads uh -huh. growing up i think so yeah was there anything in school that that really kind of turned you on um i mean you're you're a writer you're a storyteller mm -hmm. did any of that for you come um come out of your education experience um, subject matter, you know, just the experience of that town and, and living in that kind of place. Uh, I was never a good student, really. I didn't, uh, I never tried at all in school. You know, I would just kind of do what I had to do to get past. Uh, I mean, I had decent grades, but uh, I never, like, gave any effort, any real effort. Um, I guess in a lot of, it's not anything I've really ever stopped to think about. I'm sure, I'm certain that it influenced me in some way. Yeah, I had some really cool teachers, uh, some really cool uh, history classes, and and those things were always interesting to me. And so maybe those correlate to writing in some way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Huh. So, um, what kinds of things w were you 
putting effort into when you were a teenager? Um, were there <laughs> anything we can talk about here? Or, or yeah, no, I mean, like for instance, did you were you at, at, at some point during your teen life were you putting effort into um, into music? Yeah, uh, so my freshman year of high school, I, uh, I'm a really big metal fan, hardcore fan, and so um, still today. Oh yeah, yeah, huge. Yeah, I love it. Um, I there were a group of guys started a band, and uh, I was just going into my freshman year, and they were just they had just graduated, so they were just out of school, and they started a band, and I play guitar, and so I joined them in their band. And uh, we were really, really heavy. Like there, were, there was no singing. It was, you know, <laughs> there was a lot of screaming and stuff. Um, but were you, were you one of those screamers? No, I didn't scream. Oh, I just, I play guitar. Good, but, I, uh, good. Yeah. I didn't, I don't want you screaming. That voice <laughs> yeah. is, is too precious. Yeah, I mean, sometimes in the car alone, if if it's been a day, you know, I'll turn something on and do it. But um, no, I never did that. I just, I play guitar. And music was always a, a big deal for me. Um, but I never exactly pursued it. I never put a guitar down. It was just always a constant. It was always something I would do in, in free time or, you know, a long time. But um, yeah, I joined, joined that band and of course, you know, I ended up getting a girlfriend and I quit the band and <laughs> focused on a girlfriend for way too long and like up until senior year, I think. And so, uh, Ooh, that's, yeah, a big, was, that's a good, that's a stretch. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good stretch, especially for a kid, there. you know, <laughs> to be a kid and, and kind of, you know, devote all of that time to, to that. It wasn't the brightest choice, you know, that I made, but again, no regrets. I like to, uh, I do think a lot about things in life and, and feel like maybe I regret them, but then I remember, you know, like every little choice led, you know, here. So, um, Indeed. Yeah. If you changed anything, it could change everything. You know, that's yeah. Yeah, that's right. So I'm I'm kind of curious about what what you were saying, and we sort of jump ahead now. Mm -hmm, what yeah. you were saying a few minutes ago, uh, Drayton, about uh, having always had the feeling that you're older than you are, and then and I love that phrase in the song. You know, I'm studying my age. What 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 um, what kind of fire have you been chewing on that makes you that you feel has sort of aged you in your mind yeah i don't i don't know i mean is that a fair question <clears throat> no that's not fair at all Sorry. No, just, um, <laughs> i don't know i think like it was just kind of grow growing up probably sooner than i should have or could have you know just like you know right out of high school i, I got a job working on the railroad you know, it's not really mm. something a lot of 18 year olds do, you know, so you do that. And then that that's a demanding job. You just jump straight into like a really heavy job like that. And uh, you kind of just you kind of sell in your youth there doing so. And so it, it catapults you into like this entirely different, you know, place, I think, with the way you think about life and things and dreams and, and stuff like that so I jumped straight into you know just being like just truly just working class immediately you know so I was playing a grown grown man's game and I, I wasn't quite you know a grown man so uh, I think that probably had a lot to do with those feelings and just yeah I don't know to work with some characters oh uh, yeah oh yeah there's everyone on the <laughs> yeah the railroad is full of characters oh. everyone there has a nickname I gotta believe it. So, what did you do on the railroad? Uh, so I was a I was a subcontractor for Norfolk Southern, and we did pretty much everything. I mean, we built rail, we replaced cross ties, we um, we would go out and just move rail, you know, and just whatever they needed done. Um, there were times where I would have to, you know, hammer sp spikes down, and that sucked. And then there were, you know, we were derailments too. So if there was a, a derailed train, we'd, we'd, we would clean up. We'd have to go out and get, you know, take cranes and get all the, the rail cars out of the way. Or, you know, sometimes, you know, derailment sounds like a huge disaster, but it's not. A train derails if the wheels leave the rail, you know. And sometimes the wheel just simply slips off the rail. So it's not a huge deal. You can just pick it up and put it back. 
Huh? What but, do you mean? Uh, no, I mean when I think of when I think of yeah, something you think that of large like a, coming off yeah, the rails, exactly. it doesn't. And, and feel often like that is the case. You know, it's a huge thing. So, and they go pretty fast. So if something slips, it's probably a mess. But in rail yards, oftentimes they'll just kind of, for whatever reason, there could be any reason. But you know, huh. wheel falls off the rail, and you got to get a crane put it back. But yeah, I mean we did everything, man. Just construction on like constructing the rail, maintaining the rail, and and then just derailment cleanup. So once you get all of the, the train cleaned out of the way and you have now cleaned up a workspace, the rail is destroyed. So you have to go in and you know get all the old rock out, put new rock in and, and put new rail and the train, you can't leave until trains can roll again. So derailments, I think the longest derailment I worked was like 36 hours straight without leaving the site. I mean, that's it's intense stuff. So when when you it sounds invigorating on some level, um, mm -hmm. but did do you recall at that time, uh, Drayton feeling, um, you know, starting to feel some sort of longing and um, maybe sadness? Yeah, because for sure. you're an artist. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, no, that's <laughs> no, that was a huge thing. Yeah, I mean, I hardly ever left my little town, you know. So I got that job, and it was, I mean. Week one, when I, I talked to the uh, to the boss and he hired me on the phone, he told me that we were going to New Orleans for a week. I was like, okay, cool, or two weeks actually. He told me to pack a suitcase for two weeks, and I was like, all right, you know. And I took the job immediately because it paid way better than the job that I had, you know, at the time. And so, um, yeah, he's two weeks. We were going to be gone. Uh, I've never been to New Orleans. Hardly been out of the state. You You're know. 18. Yeah, I'm 18. Not much going on. So. Uh, yeah, that was just immediate. Now I'm like out for two weeks in New Orleans working this crazy job that I've never, like I felt incredibly out of place, you know? And so, uh, and then after that, um, we worked all, all around the Southeast mainly. And uh, yeah, I was just constantly gone, different city every week. And it's the railroad too. So like, you know, you could leave for knowing that you're gonna be gone for a week and you have a job to do, but then Friday rolls around and you're headed back in and you're almost home and you get a phone call that there's a derailment in you know Spring City, <laughs> Tennessee. So you make a U-turn and now you're headed to a derailment for the next 12 hours. You know, oh, wow. so it was a lot of. Uh, and then the I was outside of the job, you know, I mean, anyone who travels for work knows the feeling. You're just cooped up in a hotel room after work. You know, when you get off, most people that don't travel, they get off work, they get to go home and you know, get a good shower and sit on, you know, their favorite chair and their family's running around, but on the road, that's not at all, you know, so you get uh, out of your job and then you go to your hotel and then that's it. You're pretty much kind of there alone with yourself for a while. And so, yeah. So it's I like training ground for being uh, a, a touring musician. <laughs> yeah, it really was. No, it, it certainly yeah. was for sure. Huh. Yeah. But it, it also, yeah, I mean, it brought a lot of uh, just, a lot of a long time, you know, so ultimately I think that led to just feeling lonesome and just, which fed the thing, you know what I mean? So I'm right. in a lot of ways like glad that, that I had those years because uh, I think it gave me a whole lot, you know, to, to sing about and to write about. So Right. Yeah. Going full circle back to the question, <laughs> now I understand why you are studying your age. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. right, that's, that's, that's great, yeah. That's <laughs> that's how it goes. Yeah, and I, I quit that job, I was tired of traveling, so I, you know, me and my wife got married, I was still on the road, and I was like, I, I nah, got to come home, you know, I have to come home. All right, well, so, let's, uh, come, let's come back to that. Yeah, man. we'll do it. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait to hear some more music. Hey, we have Drayton Farley on Red Barn Radio this evening, and uh, we're gonna have more conversation later on, and let's get back to the music. Welcome back, Drayton Farley. Truth here is that I 
stubborn to a fault I get so locked away inside in light of all these thoughts the truth is that there's nothing there's nothing left to do it feels just like I've done it all so I guess it must be true Maybe if I focus I might find a reason yet I know that everything's so broken here How the hell could I forget There's a sun behind this darkness This darkness cannot last that I've died long with no way to return I've been building all these bridges watching old ones burn the truth is that I'm only really here to see the day I can't hardly find a reason I might have a need to stay Truth is all the work I've done is work I've done in vain. This world will rip you right into, leave you ragged in the rain. If you listen close enough, you might hear my jealous heart. It's full of all this nervous fear that hit my fall. If I focus, I might find a reason yet. Know that everything's so broken here. How the hell could I forget? There's a sun behind this darkness. This darkness cannot last. I gotta tune this guitar up real quick. Yeah, I meant to I meant to share that with you.
Yeah, that's uh, pitching on fits. I was uh, I was telling Brad I showed my brother that song when I first wrote it, and he told me he thought it was the best song I'd ever written, and I did not agree at the time. I have to step off and get a water. Here. But I think um, after I recorded it and kind of got to. To hear myself, it was. Um, I realized what I'd written. I, I wrote that song really fast. I was, I was a, that one of those that just poured out, and so I didn't. I don't think I processed it, you know, before I really shared it with anybody. Folks really like that song. This next song, I wrote at work. called American Dream. Well, I'ma just keep watching Think my heart stopping Nicotine fiend of a man I was born this way, I'm a government slave, was raised on stolen land. And it's a hard old kind of life, begging the ashtray for nickels and dimes, writing these songs 
trying to wrap my mind around the force-fed American dream. I'm still a six-gun on it. Let the truth hurts, don't it? To catch me if you can. Well, before I tell you about what we have coming up next on Red Barn Radio, a uh, couple things. Uh, remember, Red Barn live streams, both tonight's and on any Wednesday, remain available online for you to view at your convenience on the Red Barn YouTube channel. Our live video stream is also available on the WEKU.org website, as is our audio stream, compliments of WGAD.net in central New York. Don't miss a single episode of our program. and. Please be sure to tell your friends what you like about Red Barn Radio. For those of you in the central Kentucky area, Red Barn Radio and LexArts, ladies and gentlemen, are hosting a block party. This is coming up, like, just down the road. And this is for folks who are listening to the live stream, folks who are in the house now. There are going to be so many uh, amazing things going on, but we're most excited for uh, Davy and the Midnight's Wolfpen Branch and the Big Maracas who will all be performing throughout the day. Catch the fun at the Arts Place on Mill Street, just out back of LexArts. We're going to really want to see you there. You can see Ed, too, and John, and me, and Matt. Yeah, that's not enough. Some awesome music. You're going to like uh, Tom, Tom Sawyer, who are our guests on Red Barn Radio next week. Tom Sawyer is a talented troupe that plays a range of um, original material, uh, ranging from introspective ballads to high-energy crowd pleasers. They have this uh, uncanny knack for landing that rootsy sweet spot where folk and bluegrass and alt country and rock gather in a way that pleases lots of ears. And they're going to please your ears, too. So uh, plan on that next week. That's on Red Barn Radio, Time Sawyer. Uh, these guys have, sta have shared stages with the likes of Langhorn Slim and the Steep Canyon Rangers at some of the Southeast's iconic festivals, like Merle and Floyd Fests, for instance. So they're going to be on Red Barn stage, and we want you here, too. That's next week. Time Sawyer on Red Barn Radio. Red Barn Radio, listen to the live. Let's get back to tonight's Red Barn Radio program. We welcome you live on our social media platforms, broadcasting from the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the grand city of Lexington, Kentucky. Please welcome back Drayton Farley to the Red Barn stage. Thank you. 
Uh, this song, this next one's called The Reaper. It's kind of about where I grew up. I grew up in an old coal mine town Where people get high and they never come back down It's a lot of old ghosts that call this place home There ain't no time to try to ride Wasn't long till I got my fill for the pills. A little here and there to help with the way I feel. Now I can't slow it down and I don't sleep. And I've been feeling partial. days in and sleeps left me for dead there's too many thoughts running through this empty head and I thought I'd find the road tonight but there's no lie now I'm doubting my chances of making Turns out they ain't helping me at all. It's three down the pipe and I feel myself start to fall. What the hell kind of hole have I dug for myself this time? I'll reap what I'll sow. So, but the reaper knows it ain't right. And would you like Thank to redo you. that song? Um, if you would like to, yes. Would you make sure that your uh, your grandpa yes. properly connected the power to the mm -hmm. clock? Yeah, that was on me. I had I had the tuner turned on. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I noticed about. I noticed about halfway through the. Uh, yeah. I didn't hear my. Uh, didn't hear my speakers not work. You want to do it again? Yeah, we can do it again. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Say when. All right. I grew up in an old coal mine town Where people get high and they never come back down It's a lot of old ghosts that call this place home There ain't no time to try to ride no 
Wasn't long till I got my fill for the pills A little here and there to help with the way I feel Now I can't slow it down and I don't sleep feeling partial to the company I keep it turns out they ain't helping me at all it's three down the pipe and I feel myself start to fall what the hell kind of hole have I dug for myself So Thank you. Uh, this next song is called I'll Be Home, and I wrote this in a hotel room when I was working on the railroad. And uh, this is one of the first songs I can remember writing that kind of made me want to continue to write.
stuck out on the road Baby, I'm stuck out on the rail I'm in another hotel room That I can't Need to hear the truth. Tell you what, we're not gonna do that song. I thought I would do it, but I can't. I can't remember it. That's a deep cut. I was gonna throw in the mix for tonight. Uh, which one was <laughs> uh, it's the Shiner. Oh, the Shiner. Yeah, no one ever talks about Shiner. <laughs> I thought I could. Thought I could pull it in. Let's see. What Let's you gonna uh, do instead? I think uh, we're gonna just. Let's roll through the um, what we have, as if we'll just go down the list. That's what we're gonna do. So do wasted youth, and then mm -hmm. talk a little bit. Yeah, good. Uh, this this song. This is a brand new song. And uh, this is one of my proudest songs. It's called Wasted Youth. Wasting my youth on trying to grow up Wasting my future, it never showed up Walking around, I'm hanging my head Serving up sounds and language instead And wasting my time on trying to get by I sold it all the way to the company line Now I'm feeling like a fool, all the freedom I lost All of my youth it's all that it cost and now I'm getting by on less and less I just needed some time to adjust myself I guess No the words keep coming I'm keeping up my best It's the only thing I can do I must Wasting my love on a silly thing is 
Cause all I ever wanted was a song to sing Some kind of door to get out of my head All over the floor and under my bed I figure I'll write until the day that I'm dead And I'm hoping they might keep listening in Cause all that I can do is shoot my shot Find myself and keep my spot Just needed some time to adjust myself, I guess. No, the words keep coming, I'm keeping up my best. It's the only thing I can do, I must confess, I must confess. Wasting my youth on trying to grow up Wasting my future, never showed up I'm walking around, I'm hanging my head Serving up sounds in a language instead All right. Thanks, man. Wow. Thank you. Wow, I love that song. Yeah, that one, that one just kind of hit me one day, and I don't know. I love it. Uh, it's not something an artist often does is you know, love something that they just created. You know, they usually have to get that uh, what's the word, reassurance, adulation from from, from, yeah, from the outside world. You know. Yeah. But no, I, I wrote that, and I was really proud of that. Man, you should be. That's a be it's a beautiful piece of writing, and uh, it just says says so much, um, Thank you. so so quickly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's short and sweet, kind of, you know. Just love it, yeah, way to go, way to go. So where were we? Uh, I, you know, it seems uh, it seems we sort of lingered uh, yeah, earlier um, on. We sort of lingered in the time before you actually, you know, started, uh, kicked off your, your music career. So yeah. let's uh, let's sort of not linger, let's move on. And, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Um, so you were, all right, so you were 18, uh, you, did, you worked at railroads, you, you worked hard jobs, you worked at the Mercedes shop, then, um, you got to a point where you were actually, you know, doing some music, playing mm -hmm. out a little bit, yeah. And you were working, uh, doing uh, windshield glass. You said you worked at Safe Light. And yeah, you liked I did. It. I worked at Safe Light. Um, you liked it? Yeah, it was a great job. Yeah, <coughs> no, that's a great company. If anyone's looking for a job, go to Safe Light. No. <laughs> no. Um, but you left it, and uh, uh, but I left. No, so um, basically, just uh, on the assembly line, that job, and like COVID, you no know, happening, put pressure everywhere in life. And so there were, there were existing pressures before that. And then before like, supply chain problems, yeah, before the supply chain, you know, <laughs> was every other word. And, uh, I think when that happened, it just amplified everything, you know, especially, I know it did for me. And so, um, and I had, I had just put, um, my album out and was just trying to promote it, self promote it. And the, uh, uh, the Hargrove and sweet Southern sadness one, or well, I'm kind of jumping to um, quitting the day job into the music kind of. Is All right. that what the is so, that what you're asking? <laughs> is that our topic? Are you at Hard Up Life now? Are you yes, released? It? That's yes. the album you're talking about. Yes, we're talking the about Hard one. Up Life. Yeah. Um, it was just songs that I had, I had been writing, and I wanted to go to a studio, but I didn't have the time to do that or the money to do that. And uh, so I just recorded that at home, and I released it and just did um, you know whatever I could to just – I did the thing that you're not supposed to do where I would just, I would DM people and be like, hey, here's my new album. Go listen to it. No one, no one's going to go listen to it, man. Like that's, that's how that works. <laughs> but you know, the effort has to be there. So I did it and uh, people started to listen and that created even more pressure to like pursue this, you know, instead. And, uh, and I had a good job. So I was not necessarily in a bad place in life, but it was, it was a selfish kind of thing. Uh, it, it was a hunger, you know, I was trying to feed it. And so I got that job at um, Safe Flight. I was started doing, Yeah. and I, like I told you uh, before, I, I was kind of lying to myself taking that job. And the real reason was just 
because you know you don't have to work weekends and so like i'm like good i can play i can book you know friday night gigs and saturdays now because i used to not be able to do saturdays so i could work music more with this job <laughs> and um yeah, I mean, my ultimate goal in the end was to just do music, you know. So you could, but you weren't, you found you weren't going to be able to write songs while you're installing the glass. Yeah, it's not either. safe, you know. You yeah, right. <laughs> you can't write songs while you're trying to, you know. Those windshields are serious th things. <laughs> they have to be in the car, you know. Um, but yeah, so it just come down to it, and uh, people started listening to that album, and that gave me like the confidence, I think, to um, to jump into that dark you know, that darkness, that unknown world. Um, Were you married at that time? Yeah. Okay, yeah. and newly married, right? Um, or, or how long have you been married? We just celebrated six years. Woo, way to go. Yeah, I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so i had been married for a while. Um, this was last year, you know, I'm talking quitting that job. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I guess so, that's right, 2021. Yeah, and those, those years, you know, these last three years, they all blend together into one big mesh okay and so talk about when uh talk about when haven was born haven your daughter is yeah. three mm -hmm. and which is just great age yeah. and uh so she was so she was born before that mm -hmm. and yeah. um how, talk about how that impacted you i mean that's huge yeah it's that just, was another one of the things you know like um i don't know i feel like every direction in life was like screaming if you're going to do it, you got to do it now, you know. And I, mean, I just had a kid, and so I was thinking, like, one, be an example to your children, you know. Like, if you if you got a dream and you're yeah, trying to do good. something, like, I can't tell you to do, do it yourself whenever you see me, like, give mine up, you know. So, and that also, that was a motivation, but it also fueled me to not, you know, fail. And so I think her coming along definitely – Definitely gave me that extra nudge. Well, that's good, but I mean, it could have done the opposite, right? It could have, it could have done, it could have taken yeah. you to that place where, Let's, you know, where you imagine that being a good parent is sort of doing what you got to do to pay the bills yeah, and, and that, the mortgage and all that business. Right, and I mean, I guess in a lot of ways that is, you know. But uh, I, that was my like uh, stipulation was like, if I could do music and like not sacrifice, you know, their livelihood for it, then that's when I'll do it, you know. And, and if you so, could be a happy parent, uh, and that was you another could th also, yeah, there was right? a, it was a lot of just self-reflecting things. Yeah, I mean, how can I be who I need to be for them, you know, if I can't do that for me first? And so I think that's true for everybody, you know. You have to be you should try to be the best you so that you can give that version of you to the people around you. And I, there was no way I was going to be able to do that, you know, working those jobs knowing that I had this to do so, so you jumped in and uh, you're managing yourself booking your own gigs yeah uh, making your own contacts working social media was were you getting some help from um, I'm sorry um, Emily your yeah, wife Emily yeah 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 she would she would help me kind of like uh, keep eyes on like the social media and like emails and stuff you know people were you know shooting messages and stuff. they're finding the music and you know, either messaging me saying, hey, like, I found the song, love it, like, you know, don't stop, or, you know, motivational things that people would say. But a lot of, uh, a few of the songs kind of got really big on uh, the TikTok platform, which drove a lot of people quickly to it, and that just drove, like, a lot of messages really fast. So I was like, you, and some messages were, you know, potential business things, you know, like, hey, we'd love to have you come out and play a show in our backyard or hey who's booking for you i'm like nobody that sounds great uh -huh. you know? so like there were things like that i needed extra eyes on like to call through the the messages and so she was helping me out with that at the yeah. time so nice and and um and so if, if if i can ask if this isn't too personal were mm -hmm. you all do you feel like you all were uh on the same page um from the get-go when it came when that time came where you where you said you know what uh I, I can't install window glass and write songs and yeah. just be available to play weekend gigs. Um, Were you and your wife on the same page there? Yeah, I mean, I think f overall we, we were on the same page in terms of is it possible, you know? But um, 
I also, I mean, maybe we were on the same page, you know, re- regarding like, this is a huge risk. Yeah. You know, right. so I think we were definitely on the same page, but I also think that I just had a, uh, just a feeling to do it and it was what I needed to do. And so I would maybe probably talk it up a little bit to her, you know, like, no, trust me. You oh, know, yeah. Trust me that I'm going to make this work. So, yeah, I mean, I think overall, I mean, she supports me and, you know, believes in me. And I think we were there for sure. All right. And I, I didn't want to jump until I thought that we were there, too. You know? Yeah. That would just disrupt you know, things. Uh-huh. <laughs> so. And, and, and so. Hey, hon, yeah. I'm uh, quitting my job today. <laughs> I'm going to go play at the bar down the road. Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. And um, so is there family nearby there, uh, her family, additional family of yours who sort of helps, helps out with, um, uh, with Haven and then yeah. uh, who will be available to help out with uh, Hollis. Hollis Kate yeah. coming up, That's right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, um, my family lives about 45 minutes from me now. Uh, her family's about an hour. So, but we also just moved. So when Haven was born, we actually lived with my parents for a good little bit. And uh, I can't remember how long, maybe six months or so, uh-huh. maybe less. Um, but yeah, we, we moved in with them when she was born and they helped a whole lot. And uh, I was still working at the time, you know. Yeah. And so I, w- I had a crazy schedule, you know. I was two weeks nights, two weeks days. Saturdays, Sundays here and there. It was, um, but no, I mean, both of our families though, they've been, we're lucky to have them. You know, we can, if we need a, a breather, we can always call a grandparent and be like, hey, you want, oh, that's a good thing. Yeah, you want this, you want this crazy toddler tonight? And they're like, of course. So. Hey, man, that's a blessing. I mean, because yeah. that's, that's a big part yeah, of what's going to make it yeah, work. I didn't, right? I didn't grow up with grandparents. They'd already passed by the time I came around. So I never had that. So I'm, I'm I feel good that she has it. Huh. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's definitely great. and definitely is a help to parents too. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, you have so uh, you got some exciting news because in the next um, what couple of months are you gonna be able to um, release some new music and can we talk about that now? Uh, yeah, I don't. There's not a whole lot to talk about right now. Um, I'm not sure when it'll release, but I did just record my first studio album and. Uh, that was last week, so it feels like a month ago. Well, it was just last week. That was last week. How yeah. many tunes? Uh, ten. Ten songs. Yeah. First time uh, doing a recording then with uh, session players? Yeah, that was, that was the first time that I've ever played outside of that metal band that I was in that I've ever <laughs> played with a band at all. And then it was the first time I've ever stepped foot in a studio. So it was, it was a whole lot of firsts, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wild, wild experience. It was very cool. Very and cool. and it was a great experience. Yeah, the way I mean, you're smiling I, tells me. Yeah, yeah, man, it was. Uh, there literally wasn't a single bad moment about it. It was five days. We, we'd get there at like ten in the morning and we'd leave at like seven or eight at night. Uh, I had the band there for three days, and so we cut. Uh, three songs a day, and we did it. Uh, we would basically just, I'd play my songs, and then uh, they would get an ear for it. You know, write charts out, and then we just go in the room and cut it live, play through a few times, just get our parts right, and get everyone in the groove, yeah, and then cut it. Wow. It, was, it was cool, man. It was, it was really cool to have those headphones on for the, and for the first time hear, you know, musicians behind me, or technically in front of me, but you know, that was cool. It was a really cool. Uh, can't forget it, really. So, uh, Drayton, do you imagine then that? Uh, the Potentially, after after Hollis is born, you have some time um, mm-hmm. time to, to take that in and and um, get rolling, right? With uh, yeah. with your with a, a second child in the family and all that. Do you imagine uh, the possibility that you would go out and um, do some performing with the band? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's the plan. I mean, this year everything's kind of timed out right and uh the studio's done you know um and so new baby will be here next month and that's going to give me i'll have a few months off and just be settling into that new life and then some shows here and there in the fall 
Um, I'm thinking the album's going to be kind of an early next year thing, and so I'm, I'm hoping. A January, that kind of January, February uh, kind of thing? I want to say maybe March. Okay, yeah. all right. And I'm hoping when that happens, you know, I'll be, I'll be hitting the road with a, with a band at least. And something I wanted to do from the start was um, the band's great, but I wanted to see if I could do it on my own too. You know, and if I could, then I liked that a lot. And uh, it was something I always thought would be cool. You know, a lot of people, a lot of bands will have an album and then they'll have like the acoustic version of that album. I kind of did that backwards, you know, first. And so I thought it would be cool to, to just hone, hone in on the songs themselves and do a whole lot of acoustic shows and then have, have a band that I could pull on and bring out, you know, every now and then for a couple week runs, you know, three or four times a year and make those things something special. Yeah. You know. So. Is there is there a pretty good uh, fan base for this kind of music for sort of the kind of music you do down where you live? Uh there's definitely fans of it. Um live music is not a very big thing on my scale, you know, around Birmingham. It's not a crazy music market. Huh. And uh so even some of the bigger bands that roll through town, you know, it, it's probably one of the smaller shows on their tour, you know. And I don't know why that is. That's just the way it is. You know, some mar markets are everyone in town shows up, and some just kind of like pulling teeth to, you know, get a buddy to come out. So uh, in my experience, I haven't played a whole lot around uh, the Birmingham area and the places I did play I frequented. So um, it was, you know, I'd get to know and that those crowds would get to – know me and know that I would be there on these dates and they would look forward to the times that I would be there and those were much smaller shows you know uh, places that don't even list a capacity you know yeah and if they had one it would be like 40 30 40 so uh, but yeah I mean it's not a bad thing I think it's just location I don't know I think uh -huh. there's a it's definitely more bigger shows where like the kind of more retired like big stars roll through town and go to the arena kind of city. Uh -huh. you know? But, yeah, coming to Kentucky was an entirely different experience. I was fortunate enough to do that a lot, you know, kind of starting out. And, uh, yeah, Kentucky folks don't don't play. It seems <laughs> they don't play, man. They're there every time. Well, it seems like you have a good base of listeners and fan base uh, happening yeah. and here two, in West Virginia and Kentucky. Two um, – you know, just the modern world that we live in and the way that artists kind of get it, get known now is digital. And so, and especially in my case, you know, I had my music kind of made its rounds on the Internet, and that's how people learned of me. And so people are just spread out, you know, kind of thin, but, like, just everywhere. And, you know, where in, whereas in the day you'd be, like, a hometown hero and then hit the road and hit these cities over and over and slowly build these fan bases up. Yeah. So I have no experience doing that, really. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a few places I can go to, and I know, like, people are going to be there. But then there's other places where I'm, I couldn't tell you. Could, yeah. Could be nobody. It could be just me there <laughs> having a good time. Yeah, right. Yeah. Gotta just let that mystery be, right? Mm -hmm. um, wow, it's so great to have you on the program. And I'm, I really enjoyed our time yeah, together. Thank you. And, um, Happy for you and Emily. Thank you. Uh, with, the, with the arrival of your new yeah. kid just right around the corner. Outnumbered. Which is so exciting, yeah. So many girls in that house. Well, we are going to, yeah, right. Well, we're going to look forward to watching you uh, as, as you uh, grow in your career and really hope you'll be able to come back uh, maybe with that band. Doesn't matter. You can come back by yourself yeah. with a band. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. All right. Hey, folks, let's welcome back uh, Drayton Farley to Red Barn Radio. Uh, this this song. It's a it's a newer song. It's not released. This one's called Twenty on High. Thirty-five minutes into Monday, 
crossing that old state line headed out east with the railway the mountains in North Carolina it's another damn week on the railroad it's another damn lonesome night one of these days I'm days I might pay a little more respect to the body that I'm in take a little less off of the edge what did you expect of an adolescent kid who was all out of allegiance to pledge what did you expect of a runaway train Busted up mainline rail. What did you think he would have to say if he decided there's a story to tell? There's 35 reasons for the bottom now. I'm still 30 counties away. I'm slipping off deep to the nothing. Speak if I had something to say. These thoughts, they're all self critical. There's two pounds left of the trigger pull. This ain't it, there's gotta be something else. Get out now before I lose myself. On the on the docket here, I think we got enough material. Yeah. All right. Okay. Does that work for you? Yeah, we'll do. Okay. Well, thank you guys. something else to do couldn't see it then but it's so obvious now I can't help to see it all through I never was scared much of dying it sounded like a hell of a plan never knew why and I still don't now life's got the slide of a It's all above my head It finds its way inside It's the only thing I fear I don't know why It's all beyond me here It's always right in the way The more there is, the more there is
Never thought much of myself There's always something more on the line I keep my heart and my head down low But my hopes I'll be keeping on high I've never known who I am Well, there are uh, so many people to thank for our program. Um, first, Drayton Farley, our guest this evening. Um, we're thankful that you folks could drop in and uh, be here to uh, be part of this webcast. Uh, we're ever grateful for our volunteers and staff who make our production happen uh, each week. Uh, it's, that's John and Matt and Eric and Kate and Forrest, and of course, our uh, full of good cheer, calm and trusty uh, producer Ed Commons. We want to thank all of you, too, for listening to our webcast, watching us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and those listening to us on the network of Red Barn stations and media worldwide. Thanks to WBKU, Red Barn's premier radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. It's your chance to hear more great live music from Red Barn Radio and WEKU. Those of you here in the central Kentucky area, you gotta be sure to check out Red Barn TV. It's our weekly program of music now on ABC 36 WTVQ. Red Barn Radio comes to you from our home, the Arts Place Performance Hall in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Our website has updates and further information on all of our guests and our programs. We're on the web at redbarnradio.com. And now once again, please welcome back uh, for one more tune, Drayton Farley, to the Red Barn stage. Thanks, Drake. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, this is a true song. This is Stop the Clock.
was a single wide and was a cornerstone. We all ate whatever daddy had grown, killed to fill our place. In these days, I'd kill ten men a week for a minute as a kid on corner heat. Times I bet you wish you never. covered everything we owned painted the whole damn place all right thank you guys wow uh thanks drayton thank you before we uh before we close tonight i just want to remind uh folks again uh those of you in well, help from uh, from Louisville to Cincinnati to uh, Huntington, West Virginia, and and all around. Uh, we have a big thing going on this weekend on the 12th, Sunday the 12th. Red Barn Radio and LexArts are hosting the Red Barn Burner Block Party. It's free admission, folks. Awesome bands, and it's all right downtown, right outside of this building. Uh, we got musical guests Davy and the Midnights, uh, the Big Maracas, and uh, Wolfpen Branch, who are some uh, some ex wooks And uh, you're going to want to come down and check this out. It'll be a great way to spend a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Make sure to stop in and hang out. We'd love to see you there. And that is all for our Red Barn Radio show for this week. You can see and hear Red Barn Radio worldwide as we stream live on the web on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern in North America. You can also listen to archived performances on Spotify and iTunes and watch mountains of video on the Red Barn Radio YouTube channel. And remember this, every like, comment, share, and subscribe helps bring Roots Music Southern style to your neck of the woods. Finally, this, if any of our featured artists are performing in your area, get out and hear them live. They need you now more than ever. And now from all of us here at Red Barn Radio to all of our friends worldwide, keep working together to be safe and healthy. And until next time, good night from Red Barn Radio. Red Barn Radio.